In my previous video, I was looking at the terrible condition of the fire in Maui in Hawaii. And I was wondering whether that was uh, a genuine thing or perhaps something more manufactured. And I suggested in that video that maybe, maybe it's a bit of a red herring, really, in some way. I mean, it's awful for those people. And of course, for the families who've lost loved ones or they're missing, it is absolutely terrifying. But I wonder that, you know, while people are looking at that, there are other things going on in the world that we're not looking at. And uh, a friend of mine sent me a story. It is in one of the national newspapers, so it may not be 100% accurate. We know what we think about mainstream uh, news. But it does highlight something that's going on in this country, my country. And it doesn't matter how many people say we don't want this to happen. It continues to happen. This government and the potential shadow government seem to want exactly the same. And yet it does seem to me that most people don't want this. And yet the government continues to just be uh, very deaf to it. It's like saying that there was a virus and they came out with some medical intervention that we were all given. And then every, people say, do you know what, actually there's been some harms actually as a result of that medical intervention. And the government sort of will not listen. I don't understand why they will not listen to the ordinary people. It just seems very odd to me in a so-called democratic country that you wouldn't listen to the, to the people of that country, seeing as if you're in government, you are the servants of that people. I think the government seems to have forgotten that they are our servants, that we, the people, the sovereign people, put them there into those positions of organisation and administration, um, and they seem to have forgotten that they are there as our servants. For some reason, they believe that they are our masters and that whatever they've promised at an election to get them in, they can throw that out and say, oh, there's a national emergency or there's some other problem that we have to do before we can actually do what the people want for us. Well, that's clearly not right. It's not wrong. And then they'll fudge and say, no, no, we are trying to solve the problem. We really are. Only they show how incompetent they really are. And therefore, if they are incompetent and they claim that they are trying to solve the problems that we want and they can't do it, well, let's find other people that can not the shadow government, because they clearly want the same. Uh, perhaps none of these. And the time to do this, of course, will be at the time when these people go round with their begging bowl saying, please vote for us, we'll sort it all out. Well, we know that's not true because they've been saying they'll sort out the education and that's not happened. They'll sort out the National uh, Health Service that's not happened. They'll sort out immigration. That's not happened. They'll sort out a whole load of issues. And every five years now, none of them actually manage to sort it out. To me, they are completely incompetent and irrelevant. So this is the article that came in from a well-known newspaper. Um, and it involves about the immigration of people from other parts of the world who want to live in this country. And they come here uh, and they go through, it seems to me, a number of different ways, some legally and some illegally. We know about the boat people. Here we go. The villagers anger as council buys 12 homes for Afghan and Ukrainian refugees on posh new build estate, where properties sell for more than £700,000, while locals languish on the waiting list. And, and now, I don't know how true any of this is because it's a national newspaper, but here we go. Um, and I don't trust the media, but this is the place and these are the houses, I imagine. Villagers have reacted in anger at the emergency council are buying houses for people. Now, the, the, the council say, as far as I can work out from this article, that they are coming legally, but where they are getting the advantage, apparently, over the locals to be able to buy the property in this place. Um, the development of 41 homes in total 
which are a mix of two or three bedrooms. It says here two bedrooms and bungalows, and it all looks very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, if you like that sort of thing, personally, I'm I'm not really into these modern houses because they all look the same. But that's uh, uh, just my own personal opinion. It says here so this is up in Lancashire, Lincolnshire, Lincolnshire or Lancashire. I can't remember. It doesn't really matter. It's a part of the country. South uh, Kesteven District Council said the homes will be given to those who arrive legally in the country before being used by families on the council's register. Um, and so that does seem a little outrageous. I just want to find out. It is Lincolnshire. Here we go. Uh, rural Langtoft in Lincolnshire. Uh, residents say there is an outcry over these plans on this 1.8 million estate. So that's um, and now this has been going on up and down the country. So these people are coming in, they say legally, but they're jumping the queue because I suppose the government say, well, we've got to put them somewhere. And then you've got all these people coming in on their rubber boats who are coming in illegally from different parts of the world. And we seem to be able to prioritize, uh, if I can say the word, places for them to go. But what about the people who live here? What about the people who need housing? What about those married people who are now divorced and forced to live together because they can't afford to get on the property? Those people with children who are in bad relationships or crammed into flats who do not have anywhere? What about the people who are paying their taxes into this country and the government are using that tax money to fund overseas military operations that actually have nothing to do with us whatsoever? What about those people who are law-abiding and trying to do the right thing? Why is it that those people who vote in these governments, who think that they live in a democratic society, are unable to uh, have the the property? And why is it these properties uh, are being gazumped by people who come from overseas? What, why should they have a, a, an advantage over us? Now I know people will say, "Oh, but Richard, you know, you're being, you, you know, you're being racist to these people. That, well, why shouldn't they have property?" Well, okay, if we have the space, if we have the housing stock, if we do not have too many people in this country already waiting and using and burdening the national health service, then maybe there's an argument for it. But if this country has something like sixty million million people already and there are people in severe difficulties there's a cost of living crisis people are out of work they can't afford to keep going they're on the various benefits in order to help them up the ladder and they need somewhere to live and they're in cramped environments and they need to to be able to do something why should they not be first on the list even those people who are completely homeless why are they not on the list, above people coming in, whether that's legally or illegally. I I, I mean, if all the time that it seems that we can give people from overseas, and I've got nothing against them personally, but I don't welcome them just to come in en masse if we are desperately in uh, dire straits ourselves with trying to find housing stock and paying for things, then the more the times that we advertise effectively by saying, look, Aren't we kind and benevolent? We've been giving them these houses, these wonderful, lovely, new £700,000 houses for free or for small reduced rents or things like that, even as a temporary thing. Is it going to stop the flow of people who want to come and live in this country and access the health service for free? Is it really going to stop that? Why have they got to come to this country? Now, I'm not saying that they should go in other countries. Other countries may have their problems as well. Far better, surely, it is for these people to get together, work out a way to improve their own country. Now, I know that might not be easy. It might not be possible. But why is it that we will be playing second fiddle to all and sundry who want to come to this country? We're so busy worrying about things like climate change and net zero and ULES and acquiescing to this tyrannical government and allowing them to walk over us uh, and allowing us to have rather dodgy medical uh, interventions which have been causing all sorts of harms 
And now we're supposed to just roll back and let people from anywhere they like come in. And we've seen that there is this um, sort of very liver lilied approach to people who are coming in on rubber boats week in, week out, in huge numbers, and that we have got to house. The fact that they don't come in with guns in their hands and do threatening gestures doesn't mean that it isn't an invasion. Clearly it's an invasion. If people continue to come and come and come and we don't push them away and say, thanks very much for thinking of this wonderful country, but actually there are legitimate ways of coming into this country and most of you are not doing that because you've thrown away all your identification. You seem to have managed to pay um, smugglers to come here and then you claim oh I've got no more money because we've we've done this and you and and all of those sort of things um why are we putting up with that if if this government is showing that it's so incompetent that it cannot see that this is a genuine invasion that people from all over the world are coming in here to disrupt the way and the culture and the traditions that we have this country in, then this government should not be in power. I don't know that there is any other government that could come in and do that. To me, it seems the government is totally irrelevant because they don't seem to be able to do what the normal people of this country actually want. I know there'll be a small section of society who say, but I welcome them, I welcome them, but not in my backyard, as it seemed to be here. There was a, a number of people saying, oh, no, no, we, we love uh, having refugees, only not in our backyard, thank you, not, not in our village. It, it, it's all right over there, uh, but we don't want them over here. Well, personally, I don't think that we... It's not really a question of whether we want them or don't want them. We do not have the resources for them. And why should all of the people in here who are paying their taxes and this money is, is being chucked away left, right and centre on what seems to be ridiculous schemes such as ULES schemes, 5G and various other things or on military operations which doesn't seem to have any benefit to us whatsoever if the government is just going to spend our money uh, all over the place i don't see why we should be paying those bills anyway it seems to me that this is um this is just us being blackmailed left right and center uh, i don't know what you think about that and i'd be interested in reading your comments but i know that i must be one of many people who are getting a bit sick and tired of a government that isn't listening and if they're not listening and if they're incompetent and they're unable to govern when it comes round to it i don't think i shall be voting for any of them these people these people who think they're in power who are after all our servants they seem to think that they are our masters, they are irrelevant. We could organise things so much better. We, the people, the sovereign people in this country, should be making up our minds. And let me put the rubber boat thing in a different light. If these people didn't come in dribs and drabs on their rubber dinghies, if they didn't come in that fashion, but they, they hired a couple of big ocean liners, two or three ocean liners, in which 50,000 people were crammed onto each of those ocean liners and they were sitting outside the channel, gurning and smiling at us and then starting to swim ashore. What would be the feeling then? The fact that it's spaced out over weeks and months and years doesn't change the fact that vast numbers of people are coming into this country completely uninvited and we don't seem to be able to do a damn thing about it. 